Josh James is a hardcore hunter from the backwards of New Zealand. I reckon my favourite weapon would have to be the longbow. There's heat to stay if you know how to get it. Matt Tebbett is a British chef who loves foraging for wild food. Wild ingredients are everything to me. Now the hunter and the chef have come together with one aim. To survive in the wildest places on earth. That's amazing. Well done, man. And prove they can still eat like kings. Oh, my. They'll forage and hunt for everything they need to stay alive. Wow, look at that. And to really test themselves, they're taking only basic kit. This is about me putting my wits against nature. Damn it. Out here, God's you appreciate it. Every mouthful. What was the name of your restaurant? We made it! Rodope Mountains, southern Bulgaria. Covering 15,000 square kilometers, this ancient forest is one of the last great wildernesses in Europe. Kiwi hunter Josh James and British chef Matt Tebbett have asked to be dropped deep in these mountains. All right, here we go. Where they'll attempt to survive alone for the next seven days. Pretty excited about this location. There is the threat of bears and wolves. I reckon we'll be right. I can run faster than he can. Hey, this place is amazing. It's just miles and miles from anywhere. Look at it. Their goal is to make world-class food out of what they can find in this wilderness. I'm really gambling on the fact that this forest is going to offer us so much. This should be a real forager's paradise. The mountains offer forager Matt dozens of wild herbs, mushrooms, and edible plants. For hunter Josh, they're home to wild boar, deer, and mountain goats. With the chopper gone, they're on their own. Wow, look at this place. Kind of almost like royal hunting ground. To really test themselves, they brought only basic kit. Got my 55 pound longbow, knife, another knife, bunch of arrows. In here I've got a poncho in case it gets wet. This is the most important part of the kit. This is my Dutch oven. It's a lot steeper than I thought it was going to be. It is going to be pretty challenging to get onto these animals up here. It's big country. But it's fantastic looking, isn't it? No, I reckon this is going to be a lot more challenging than we thought it was going to be. These valleys are steep and treacherous, but Josh and Matt must find somewhere to shelter near to a source of fresh water. With no map or compass, it's down to Josh to find a place to camp. So is that where we want to head, down to the river? No, I don't think so. We definitely don't want to be uh, going down that valley, I'd say. How can we stay up high in these alpine basins just to avoid all the steep rocky crap? Wow, that's pretty bloody sheer, isn't it? One of these basins will have a creek. Almost 1,000 feet below them is a river, but Josh believes the descent is too steep. Up the valley is a gully where he hopes they'll find a creek for drinking water. getting on the day now. I would have liked to have reached a campsite by now. And we can see some uh, thunderheads up above us. Mark my words, we will get wet. Thunderstorms are common in the Rhodope Mountains at this time of year. It's probably a pretty good idea to stock up on some tinder so that we don't have any problems lighting a fire later on. Why don't you grab a bunch of this old man's beard stuff? <laughs> old man's what? Old man's beard. Okay. It's just moss that's grown from the tree. <laughs> and I'll get some of the seed heads. Looks a bit like Josh's beard. Gnarly. I'm just going to keep pushing around the edge of the hill. And uh, hopefully, when we get to the meadow over yonder, there'll be a creek running right down the middle of it. Fake exposed there, isn't it? No water either. No good dust. Right. Boy, Sherlock. Which way? It's raining down that end of the valley. Oh, let's go. 
With rain approaching and temperatures plummeting, Josh decides to risk the steep descent towards the river, despite scree slopes and sheer cliffs. If one of us falls here and breaks something, that's that done, isn't it? It's gonna start hammering down pretty soon. Getting caught in the rain now could cause a dangerous loss of body heat. Down some water, bro. Fantastic. Bonus. But yeah, let's find a flat place and snag a camp up real quick, eh? This is as good as we're gonna get. We'll get our ponchos on the ground and then we'll whack a hook A-frame up. You just hear a wolf howl. Did you hear that? We need to smack this up pretty quick, mate. Now this whole sort of place is sort of closing in. It was all nice and wide and open and inviting and exciting earlier. Now the whole sort of atmosphere is, is that much um, more sort of pressing. Okay, so here comes the rain, which is not what we want on day one at all. You get under there, and I'll fix it. Matt. Ah! If this doesn't lift, probably won't be able to light a fire. It's going to be a very, very long, cold, and probably miserable night. While Matt shelters under his poncho, Josh builds a lean-to camp using beech and spruce branches. Matt's a little bit below the weather at the moment. He's not used to camping in the rain. Me, on the other hand, I don't mind a spot of camping in the rain. It's just been raining and raining and raining. And it just puts a lot of kind of big dampener on your mood. It doesn't look like it's going to let up either. I mean, this rain could be <clears throat> a real hindrance. I suspect animals don't wander around too much in the rain either. So he might be coming unstuck there. It's quite a bit of work that goes into one of these. What I'm doing now is I'm collecting dead wood that's still standing, that's still on the tree, because it's going to be dry, and we'll light a nice fire. And that might tear up Matthew. After two hours of heavy rain, the storm passes, and there's a break in the clouds. OK, so I think the rain's almost stopped. I'm going to head down to the river there, and I'll go and get some water. Uh, and then maybe something that we can flavour it with. I'm looking at these, these young beech leaves here. We can even use those. What we're not sure here is water. Josh has knocked up a really, really good looking shelter. So it was a good thing we collected this dry tinder earlier on in the day. And it's really good for starting fires. We're away. Maybe I'll have a crack. Make some beech leaf tea. This will start warming us up a bit. Good. Boiling will purify the water, and the beech leaves are a great source of vitamins. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> I do believe you just took the water all over the fire. <laughs> Smooth, bro. <laughs> That's better. It's cranking. It's nice. I'm glad it's not raining anymore. That would have been rubbish. Would have been stinking. Stinking. That was pretty miserable there. I'm all right now. That's nice. It's a bit flavouring there. <laughs> this is the life. Actually, this isn't the life because we don't have any food. And when's the best time to hunt? Change a light. Why? So you go out and feed? Yeah, the most of most them. I might climb up to that rocky outcrop if I can see any animals coming out just on dark. And... Fingers crossed, though. Josh is used to hunting the animals of New Zealand's South Island. Here, he's hoping to find deer and a type of mountain goat called chamois. Well, <laughs> we haven't quite got to the top of the hill. The thunder's kicked off and it looks like it's about to hammer down again. So I think I'm just going to hightail it back to camp while I still can. 
the heavy rain will drive the animals into hiding. There's deer here, right there. So the little are here. Well, they're not actually here. <laughs> they were here, now they've gone. Without a doubt, we're not going to get any game tonight. It's just the weather that looks like it could cause us a few problems and get under our skin, as it were. But I can hear thunder again now. If the rain persists, Matt and Josh's trip could be over before it's begun. British chef Matt Tebbock and Kiwi hunter Josh James Raining. are attempting to eat like kings in the wildest places on earth. But thunderstorms in the Rhodope Mountains of Bulgaria have left them unable to hunt and they have no food. I've got up before, before sunrise, come up the hill, looking for animals. Plan is to find a rocky outcrop and see if we can find some chamois. Chamois, or chamois, graze on open ground where they can easily spot approaching predators. Josh heads for rocky outcrops he spotted 400 meters above camp. Josh has been out there for a few hours. Maybe he's onto something. So I'm going to get out, have a look, see what I can find. Chef Matt is no hunter, but he is an expert forager who serves wild food in his restaurant. Here in Bulgaria, right up in the mountains, this is where so much of the wild food that comes into the restaurants actually originates from. You know, Josh is off stalking his big animals and he's getting excited about that, but this is what I'm getting excited about. It's not that dissimilar. This feels like hunting. Really slowly and carefully keep your eyes open all the time. That is what I was looking for. These are morel mushrooms. They're just an explosion of flavor. They're absolutely, absolutely beautiful. At 40 pounds per kilo, Wild morels are one of the most expensive mushrooms on the planet. And you can see why they're so expensive, because somebody goes out, spends hours and hours looking with his eagle eyes through the woods for what? Well, I've got three mushrooms at the moment. Shammy, bit it down in the rocky outcrop. There they are, there's a whole bunch of them on the ride. There's food right there. My mouth's actually watering just, just, just looking at them. The eldest female stands guard above the others to sound an alert if predators approach. This makes chamois difficult to hunt. It's too far to shoot. We might see if we can stalk around the corner of this hill. It's going to be a real tricky one to get in on, but I think we'll give it a crack. Back in New Zealand, Josh hunts with a rifle, but here he has only a bow and arrow. He needs to get close enough to make a clean shot to the head or vital organs to guarantee a kill. Shoot him in the back or in the Oh my word. I've never seen so much. All this, right down to here, this is called wood sorrel. It's very, very highly prized in restaurants. Real kind of zing to it, you know? It's like a little bit sort of lemony. It's also packed with vitamin C. 
I mean, it is up there at the top level of the most expensive things you can buy. And here I am, sat in a Bulgarian forest amongst a whole carpet of it. Wood sorrel is rich in vitamins and iron. It's prized by the world's top chefs as a luxury garnish. Right, fella. How you doing? Did you manage to um, sneak up on some mushrooms? mushrooms? Yes, I did. did. Yes, I did. Get out of here. Is that it? Huh? What do you mean, is that it? Do you know how expensive that would be? How'd you go on? I didn't really. Oh. Almost got one, but. In the interest of ethical hunting, I decided not to take the shot. And Why? If I had missed it or nicked it or shot it in the jaw, it may have lived for a couple of weeks and starved to death, so for a quick, clean, humane kill, I prefer not to shoot the animal unless I know there's a really high percentage of me hitting it in the exact spot I want to and it's gonna it's gonna have a quick happy death if there's such a thing. So I'm very impressed. Yeah. That was very controlled. It was. We might regret that in four days. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. When no. you're fed up with mushrooms. Yep, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right, okay, well let's cook them up. I'm gonna go and get some water. We've run out of water. Oh, I'm gonna lie down because I'm shagged. Oh. Better be bloody worth it, mate. I was just sleeping. Oh. I think I saw a fish. Mate, I think you're dreaming. There's one, yeah. there's one, right there. You're right, there's definitely one in there. Fish could provide a vital source of protein, but with no rod or reel, they'll have to improvise a way of catching them. I reckon you, Oh, hello. What? You're going to put your hand under the rock. Yeah. And tickle the fish. How do you tickle a fish? Scare them under the rock, and when, once they're hiding under the rock and their heads are hidden, you put your finger under, and you just gently feel up until you feel their tail, and then you just put your hand on their belly like that, and then you grab them. It makes them go funny. It makes them go, uh, and then you Make grab me them. go funny. That's ridiculous. Trout tickling puts the fish in a trance-like state. They then stay still, making it possible to catch them by hand. I like the way you're making me do this. It's a bit chilly. If you can catch one of those fish, it's quite cold. Me and your kids are going to think you're a legend. I don't reckon you're going to catch one. Can you feel any? Jeez! <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what I'm feeling. There's one right oh, man, just, I There's one just it. swam under that rock right under your, your legs. See, right below you. Right there, see him, see him? Yeah, That's yeah, it, right yeah. there. Shh, 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 shh. Right. <laughs> I don't believe it. What do I do with it now? Throw him on the bank. <laughs> Mate, you're gonna mount that or what? Put it up on the wall? <laughs> Is this the first trout you've ever caught? With my hands? All right, come on. Get out of here. Mate, you're a machine. <laughs> There's another one by your foot. Keep going, we need about 10 more of these things and we're in. <laughs> in my experience, fish are extremely hard to catch with your hands and that's just hoard two of them out right in front of me. Unbelievable. Ah, oh, Come on, you. I can touch him. Come on, Matt. I can touch him. Get it. Tickle him, tickle him from under the belly. Grab, grab him. Oh, stop <laughs> around, bro. <laughs> Why do I? I'm not the hunter. Why aren't you in there as well? Get up there and catch some more fish, mate. Come Go on, on. you're on a roll. <laughs> oh, get, 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 get. Good work, mate. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm slightly astounded, actually. <laughs> We've got dinner. Mate, well done. <laughs> well done. Unbelievable. That was great fun. Really good fun. Just to go fishing with your arm. Matt is a natural poacher. <laughs> I'm not going to say fisherman. <laughs> it's only going to feed us for one meal, but it's going to be enough to get me back on the hill and hopefully bag something. River trout, wood sorrel, and morel mushrooms give Matt the basis of a gourmet meal. 
After 36 hours in the mountains, it will give Matt and Josh over a thousand calories. I'm going to throw in a handful of the beech leaves. I'm just going to treat it like spinach, really. It's quite earthy looking. It's quite, kind of almost camouflage. But we can lift that with the addition of this sorrel. It's going to lift it in terms of all that, that lovely little kind of sharpness that these leaves bring. And there you go, that is it. And I think for our first meal in the middle of a Bulgarian forest, we're doing all right. Dinner time, man. Come and get it. Wow. That fish is good, man. Eh? Really good. Mm. It is good. I could eat pots and pots of those mushrooms. Mm. So good. They're good, aren't they? But imagine those mushrooms with some meat. That'd be good. We're going to have to obviously eat more food than the pitiful amount of mushrooms you've brought home. Huh? Delicious starter. At the end of day two, Matt has provided a much needed meal. But hunter Josh has failed to catch anything. Are you getting up hunting early? Uh, I am, yep. Are you? <coughs> okay. If we can get up into those bluffs. If I don't break my neck, I should be able to mm -hmm. bring home the bacon. Don't wake me up in the morning. All right. Right. Happy hunting. Cheers. See you later, mate. Man cannot live on trout and mushrooms alone, so we need some meat. Oh. Hey, mate. It's oh, morning, then. I'm going out, <laughs> and um, I may be gone for a long time. Cheers. If I'm not back tonight, don't worry about it. I'll be sweet. Hopefully, I'm going to bring back an awfully large animal, and we eat like kings. All right? All right. All right, see you later. Good luck. Considering he's a stealthy hunter, he's really bloody noisy in the morning. Absolutely chucked it down last night. The fire's completely drenched. Uh, Josh has got a load of dry tinder, I think it's called. So he had a bit more foresight than me. I don't know how long Josh is going to be out hunting for. He might be back in the next 10 minutes or he might not come back tonight, I'm not sure. I know he really wants to get hold of something so we can eat it and for his own ego, I think. After yesterday's failed hunt, Josh plans to find a grazing area and wait for deer. There's some really good fresh front bunch down here. That's real fresh. There's been a couple of fairly large animals moved through here in the last probably three or four hours. We're just gonna sit here and stake this out for a little while. To stake out deer, Josh needs total stillness. With 310 degree vision, deer detect even slight movement much better than humans. deer under cover, far from this grazing site. It's not going to plan at the moment. So it's a bit pointless trying to hunt in the rain. <laughs> this is a bit stink. It's been extremely challenging because there's so much grass growing everywhere and the animals aren't going to a particular food source. They're just wandering all over the forest really. They're not really taking any trail here or there so I can't ambush them. I've just got to walk around till I see one then try and still get on them. To give you an idea of the task at hand, I've got to find an animal somewhere 
out in that stuff there. So it's almost like Mission Impossible trying to find that needle in a haystack. Let's get this on. It's been nine hours since Josh left camp. With no idea if he will return today, Matt is searching for his own food. <laughs> Get this. I'm pretty sure these are quail eggs, and this is a quail nest. Amazing. But I recognize the, the shell. I don't want to completely plunder the nest. There's going to be a little quail very upset somewhere, so I'm just going to take... Take four, five, maybe, maybe six. So I can put together something to eat. <coughs> Mushrooms and eggs. And it's beautiful. It's a lovely combination. It's such an easy thing to cook scrambled eggs, but it's also a really easy thing to overcook. Just because we're out in the wilds, it's no excuse to cook bad eggs. This really is. Bloody delicious. Scrambled quail eggs and mushrooms give Matt a vital source of energy. Sounds like a dog, but that's actually a deer. Barking his off. Yeah, there we go, there we go, perfect. But down the far end. So I don't think it's seen us. You know what? I reckon I'm gonna do it. The deer is one kilometer away across the rocky terrain. To get close enough to strike, Josh must move slowly and stay downwind. Extremely challenging to hunt the deer. Yeah, they've got extremely good smell, very good hearing. After stalking the deer for 45 minutes, Josh loses sight of his prey. It's just the way hunting goes sometimes. I'm hoping that there's going to be a, a whole world of protein delivered into the camp later on today. So it'd be just nice to put something else with it. This looks like grass. These are, in fact, wild onions. Wow, that's brilliant. And this really is a kind of forager's paradise because you can just literally trip over things. Time here. This is beautiful. Really, really pungent. Mm. Oh, <clears throat> and there's another one. And this, this is, this is something called burdock. Bit of a sort of forgotten vegetable, but it's a fantastic source of starch, carbohydrates. That's great. Look forward to trying that. Come across some bear here. You can actually, if you were hungry enough, you could pick the seeds and whatnot out of his, out of his dung, but give me another six months up here, I might crack into it, but I'm not that hungry yet. Over the course of a long day, Josh has hiked nine kilometers from camp. Very disappointed. I'm really hungry. I'm getting cold now. Probably because I haven't had what to eat all day. It's in grass. What I'm going to do is just anchor down. We're approaching that magic hour, which is the last hour before sunset. So, uh, if anything's going to walk out, it's going to walk out in the next hour. I bloody hope so. In early evening, Deer and chamois break cover to graze. It's Josh's last chance for the day. I've been sitting up here for an hour now. And the clouds just rolled in. It's amazing how fast it's coming. It's fun. The whole feeling pretty much screws us for hunting tonight. With no time to get back before nightfall, Josh has to sleep out. I'm just gonna go down 
can't find one of these really big trees on the leeward side of the hill. So I've got some shelter. <sighs> Light a fire. At this altitude, it'll be close to freezing soon after sunset. Lack of food and exhaustion could quickly lead to hypothermia. Josh needs a fire that will last the night. What I'm doing, I'm just trimming this to make it semi-flat so it's going to rest on top of the other log. Josh is building a long log fire. Thick logs. Once the inner edges of the logs catch fire, cold air is drawn in, in a constant flow, which should keep it burning all night. I've got my thickest log on the bottom. That's where I'm going to light my fire on top of. Once that fire's going and I've got a bit of a coal base here, I'll put the top log on top and that should burn all night. I've just got to go get some dry bits of wood for kindling. Preparation is pretty key, you need to have enough dry wood. And then I have my birch bark. So on the outside of the birch bark, I'm just going to scour it with my knife. And as I'm tearing the strips off, it's also creating a really fine powder under there. And it's going to spark really easily. I'm not exactly bursting into the flames, is it? There we go. Alright, I'll keep the big knife handy because there are bears out here. So pretty hard, pretty hard to be in good spirits right now. Even missed the old lady. I've been up in the hills for too long. I'm doing all right. There's lots of food. It's all kind of small. It's not really what I had in mind. And Josh is, uh, he stayed out hunting. I'm hoping that's a good thing. I'm hoping he's onto something. What a night. But I am going to go back to the cliffs, I think, see if I can get a chamois. Wandering around the forest hoping we crash into one isn't really an option. We've got to think smart. Josh hasn't had a meal for 24 hours. Since leaving camp, he's burned 3,000 calories. He's headed to high ground in search of chamois. Right there, right there, quick, someone looking at us. Right there, see it? Wow, we just blew it. Oh, so frustrating. As it so happened, there was two up here. They smelt us, and they've seen us straight away because chamois have 16 times binocular vision, so that's pretty much blowing our hunt. I feel sick. I need to go back to camp have some day. It's amazing how, uh, how deflated I am right now. the truth I'm over it. Stink. What a stink couple of days. All that country travelled for nothing. Stink. So it's getting quite late now and there's no sign of Josh. I'm not sure how much longer I could go on on my own. Really. Can't get a bit bored and start talking to myself.
In the Rhodope Mountains of Bulgaria, Kiwi hunter Josh James finally has his prey in sight. It's looking right at us. The main thing is, once you get in position, stay real cool. Somewhere. shot straight to the spine has killed the deer quickly and humanely. This is a uh, male roebuck, real good condition, and I believe it's customary in these ways to, to put some, um, some food in their mouth so when they go to the afterlife, they've got something to eat. It's just a sign of respect for the animal. It's always quite sad shooting a deer. Always brings a tear to my eye. Quite beautiful creatures. Pretty emotional right now. It's been a it's been a long week. I'm starving. But really looking forward to a feed. And uh, yeah, I'm just pretty happy that I finally got one. So I'm a, still about a couple of hours hard walk back to camp, but I'm not going to make it before dark. So instead of doing that, I've just got to find somewhere to shelter down for the night. Priority number two is getting the carcass up in the tree, um, away from my camp, well away from my camp, probably a couple of hundred metres, so if it attracts bears, they're not going to eat me, they're going to eat my deer. All right, so I'm just going to take its hocks off now, make it a little bit lighter to carry. Don't have bears in New Zealand, don't need to worry about doing this back home. It's Josh's second night away from camp. Home, sweet home leaving Matt wondering where he is. Maybe he's on, uh, on a hunt for something. It should be quite nice. Maybe he's fallen off a cliff. I'm a bit worried about the, the old terrain. I'm just going to cut across there, cut its aorta valves off, slice the heart up and cook the sliced up pieces on a stick. After two days of mountain hiking, Josh has covered 15 kilometers on a diet of grass. I'm really looking forward to this. The deer's heart will provide a much needed 450 calories. I spent a bit of time in Japan. Now, over there, they eat the heart raw. It's pretty good, actually. It's actually got quite a good flavor. I might just eat another bit raw right now. Mm. Oh yeah, that's good. Oh, that's real good. This is the life. <laughs> Why would he have stayed out tonight? He has to turn up tomorrow with something. Has to. From zero to hero. Just like that. <laughs> Stoked. What a good night's sleep. Look at that, what a pearl of day. 60 hours after he left camp, Josh is preparing the carcass for the walk back. First of all, I need to cut off his head because I don't want his little antlers stabbing me in the leg all the way home. With a 35 kilogram deer strapped to his back, Josh has a five kilometer trek back to camp. This, my friend, is the smallest deer in the forest. <laughs> Holy crap, that's beautiful. Extremely lucky to get it. I didn't think I was going to get one at first. I, was, uh, I almost gave up and huddled under a tree and went Died. to sleep for two more days, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Good work. This roebuck deer is a chance for Matt to create a restaurant quality meal. So what I need to do uh, is build a big frame. It'll be sort of spatchcocked, so opened up like that. 
That's probably roughly the size I want. One skin. Beautiful, now it looks like food. Can you help me put it on this? Oh, so I've got a whole bunch of this time here. That is exciting. Big beast, slap it on the fire, sit there, eat it like, you, like you're some sort of king. Proper bloody cooking. Right, let's go. Right, drop it down, let him to adjust it. The frame keeps the thicker shoulder and back meat closer to the heat and the legs further away to ensure an even cook. Matt's also making a soup with the mushrooms, burdock and onions he foraged to go with the venison. We've got the protein, we've got carbohydrates, we've got fresh herbs, which is going to give it loads and loads of flavour. It's got everything you need, everything you need to, to enjoy life, really. This is kind of, this is surviving and then some, living well, I guess. After two hours cooking... Right, we're ready, man. Matt is serving spatchcock roebuck with morel soup. This has got to be the prime cut, the back steaks right there. Oh, you're going for the best bit. <laughs> you know how much that cost in a restaurant? This feels really decadent. Just you carving out a whole that? back strap. Amazing. Wow. Go Real good. That is something else. Way better than any commercially grown meat, doesn't it? Really. It's just madness that you have to come to a place like this to taste meat as good as that. And mushrooms is amazing as those. The morels, yeah. They're something else, aren't they? They're really. They're amazing. I mean, you've nailed the hunting. I was just having a field day here. How about a good week? Came out to conquer this. This is what we wanted. This is what we got. Doesn't get better. What about you? All the above. <laughs> <laughs> same, same here. We've nailed it. Shot, bro. Time. Shot. Pretty nice end of the week, actually. Happy as. Ready for some breakfast? We we'll take those legs with us, yeah? Yep. Yeah. After seven days in these remote mountains, it's time for the long trek to meet their ride. What an amazing experience. It has really been quite overwhelming and quite emotional. Would I come back here again? Yes, I would. You know, we set out to do this one job, to live like kings in the wilds, to really sort of get to grips with our environment and we succeeded. Amazing week. You enjoy it? Oh, it's great fun. <laughs>